three, two, one. Here we go! In this episode, J.G. Keller's specialist Thomas Bray will talk about industry issues when it comes to what drivers face out there with distractions, with other people on the road, and also how to manage through driver performance issues. For those shippers and brokers who are thinking of skipping over this episode because it's about truckers, you may want to listen in because it'll give you a good glimpse into what your truck drivers and your carriers are dealing with on a daily basis. Please give mad love to our Mad Gains sponsors who, without their support, Mad Gains wouldn't even be possible. JG Keller has a fleet management software called Encompass. Check it out. The links are in the description of this posting. You get a free trial and they are a flexible solution to managing your fleet, no matter what size your company is. OTR Capital is my favorite factoring company for brokers and for carriers. They don't play games, There's no hidden fees, it's a true non-recourse. They help you with your back office, uh, back office admin, and they treat you like family. But what, what else are, are there any other major issues that you're dealing with or you're hearing about on a daily basis? Yeah, it's, it's, and some of it's society wide. Like this next one you know, that, that, that I, customers are constantly grappling with is distracted driving, electronic distractions. Yes. How can I, as a carrier, understanding that if my driver is distracted and driving and hits somebody, I'm on the hook. There's all kinds of issues. What's your policy? How do you discipline? What do you do about this? Do you do anything about this? Do you have a policy? You've got all these things, and it's 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 it, for lack of a better term, it's a societal problem. You know, you, you can't not drive down and see somebody not playing on their device. You know, there's there's always that going on. So that's one of the things that these fleet yeah, that's huge. How, how do you tell? How do you walk a company through at least thinking about how to make that decision? Because I know companies that don't have they're pretty big and they just whatever the driver wants to do is what they want to mm -hmm. do and then i have other companies that are like you will never touch your cell phone yeah in one of our trucks ever yeah, uh, i've got i've got a good friend of mine that um I don't, I don't, steve <laughs> name mentioned or steven pardon me i would appreciate his name mention he was one that if you come back here with a citation for using a handheld cell phone or texting Park your truck, take your stuff out of it, go home. You're done. Yep. End, end of discussion. And they said, yep. you're never going to catch me. No, I'm probably not going to catch you, but there's 14,000 patrol officers that do roadside inspections that know the rules. One of them is likely to catch you sooner or later. And if yep. you walk away from your well-paying job, this is the quickest way to do it. So, you know, it can be done, but you've got to, it's something you really have to, like you mentioned, you've got to really stick Stick your gun, stick by your guns with it. This is what our policy is. We don't make exceptions, whether we like you or don't like you, you know. And it, it, there's just no other way to do it. There's all kinds of, you know, different things that carriers have tried. But basically, what it comes down to, because you, we just, there's no other way to do it. If we catch you, whether it's through a dash cam, through a citation, through a roadside inspection violation, we're going to take immediate and hard action. Well, you know, I was actually changing some, yeah. The arguments that you hear from the driver, I was changing songs on my phone. I was yep. I reprogramming was my GPS map. Or yep, blah, blah, yep. Blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the my my the one kind of the, <laughs> my buddy, no, your cell phone stays mounted on the dash. You get a bracket for it, it stays on the dash, one touch to play with it, that's all you get. That's yep. cool. So if you get caught and you try to tell me and the officer that oh, I was I was setting up my GPS or I was changing a song, it's it's not gonna work. Up front, you know, and most officers are pulling you over because you're holding your phone longer than yeah. just tapping, tapping. I mean, some of them are quick to play over, I'll admit that, but mm -hmm. most of them it's because they know and saw you've been hold you were holding that phone for a while. Yeah, I'm that it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous just to use a cell phone at all, yeah. even if it's with the even with the headsets. I find that like I'm driving and I won't even sometimes I won't even know how I'm so engrossed in a conversation. I won't remember even getting to the grocery store. And then I'm like, oh my God. Well, there's the different realms that cell phones take you into, you know, 
as far as realms of distraction, you got cognitive, you got audio, you got visual. You know, there's just so many different realms of distraction that you get wrapped up in because you're, you're listening, you're thinking. Um, suddenly you're not watching, you know, so it's it just, it just, yeah. Kathy really don't need to go down. And uh, I got a different, <laughs> different buddy of mine that uh, had one of his drivers that came back and said, well, I was changing songs. That's where I always remember that from. And so my buddy being who he is, yep. the first driver calls the officer involved and says, you know, what was the deal? Because my driver's insisting that he was changing songs. And he says, well, oh yes, do tell. Unless he was using his left earlobe to change songs. He, he was oh. Because when I saw him coming through the That's intersection, terrible. he had the phone up against his left ear. So yep. the only way he could have been changing songs would have been with his earlobe. It's terrifying because there's like a lot of there are a lot of truck drivers out there who have to deal with the driving community mm -hmm. messing around with their phones and causing accidents and ruining a truck driver's day. And then there are other truck drivers that are playing video games and watching movies and da 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 da. da. So you're right, it's yeah. a huge pressing concern in our industry. Um, yeah, and, and, and because of the, the way our industry functions, the only thing you can do is is make the, talk about expectations. Make sure your drivers understand this is what's going to happen if this happens, whether it's on a dash cam, it's an, it's a citation or a roadside inspection violation. We get word that you're not following this. There's going to be serious consequences. That's that's really all you can do other than all you can. Yeah. Other than having inward facing cameras. That's on but 24 even then, hours a day. How are the yeah. Cameras, yeah, exactly. And then how are the cameras supposed to know you're on the phone? It would only be mm -hmm. if you had an incident mm -hmm. that triggered like the camera to take a, I know that there are, you know, some trucks, like let's say we have a lane, di a, what is it called? Lane, um, lane deviation. Deviation. And then, mm -hmm. you know, for the really techie companies, mm -hmm. the fleet manager gets a notification in the software that, your yep. driver just had a lane deviation or a yeah, the, that um, lane departure is captured and driven. sent back. And so was the, uh, the, the older cameras used, uh, strictly, uh, G loading. You know, if it picked up a G force of over a certain threshold, whether lateral for or aft, uh, the newer ones now are a lot more sophisticated where they'll pick up that yeah. lane deviation or that lane departure, or they'll pick up the fact that you just rolled through a stop sign, you know, cause the yep. I recognize the stop sign. But it's all based on the same premises. Or a hard break. Or a hard break, yeah. It sees something, it does the capture. So, you know, it's it's the odds that you're gonna so that driver doing how, something. How yeah, yeah. How how so how have you been able, like as a fleet manager, it must be kind of frustrating on one hand, it's safer vehicles and safer drivers, because you can watch and coach them through all these different situations. You would have otherwise never known it happened. You could prevent a fatal accident from happening. Because maybe somebody was falling asleep and had a lane departure or was on the phone. You can coach them through it, right? But as a driver, that's got to be tough to have somebody kind of up your butt all the time. <laughs> looking at your camera and looking at you and anything you do wrong. That's kind of a little overwhelming. Well, the driver side of it, and I'll give you my reason for being a truck driver. I liked working alone. I loved running the West Coast. I left Wisconsin and, you know, I had... Well, well I'll, I'll do it legally. Three and a half, four days with nobody bothering me. <laughs> <Do it legally. laughs> I had to think how long it would actually take, but if you did. Yeah, you totally did. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd unload, reload, and I'd run back across the Texas, Mississippi, you know, or wherever. So I'd have another three, four days where nobody messed with me. So, you know, that's, that's where you, by putting a camera in the truck, you're suddenly working against that culture. Where this is why I'm doing this. So you've got to be, and, and this is one of those things that I, when I talk to fleet managers about this myself, and I got a coworker, Mark, that uh, works with this stuff all the time. You got to be very careful and you got to be very, you know, uh, not really kick load, but you got to be very disciplined about how you work with your drivers on these things. Because if you tell them, if we catch anything on here, you're fired. Well, they're going to hate them from the word goal. Oh, yeah. They're going to be know, like, what the heck? You've got to come in with, we're going to put these in. Certain things will get you in trouble right off the bat, period. But they're things you should know as a professional driver. You should yep. know get you on a cell phone. It's going to be bad. If we catch you without your seatbelt, it's going to be bad. You know, there's a certain thing. For the other stuff, you know, the lane departures that you corrected, uh, the rolling stops, things like that, we're going to catch you. Yeah, we're going to catch them. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring you back. We're going to talk to you. And we're going to say, just here's what you need to do going forward. Don't do it again. And so long as we don't see you repeating things, we're probably going to be okay. Yeah. The end of the day, 
goal is to make you a better driver so there's less chance you're going to crash the truck and hurt yourself or others. So, you know, it's yeah. how you manage it a lot of times. Going back to that retention discussion and how you manage. Going back to that retention. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, who, okay, this is side sidetrack, but who would ever guess? <laughs> I bet you were driving when you were a truck driver. And you're driving every day and you're just loving that you're by yourself, free on the road. What if someone had told you, hey, 15 years from now or whatever it is, you're going to be <laughs> on Zoom <laughs> every day. <laughs> webinars and talking to people every day about trucking. <laughs> you probably be like, get out of here. <laughs> There's no way that's ever going to be possible. I, I did have, I, I did have one of these incidents where you look back at it, and I could have been rich if I would have addressed it differently. That I worked way back in the day, who they got these brand new devices where it was a nickel a letter to communicate. The boss could look and see where I was at any time. And once an hour, this device would report back where my truck was. This is in the late 80s. Ooh. Myself and my little buddies kind of looked at each other, said, this isn't going anywhere. Nobody would ever want this because the company is <laughs> out there and do our thing, and they don't really want to know what we're doing. Uh, that little outfit was was called Qual Qualcomm, I think it was their name. Back oh, my God. <laughs> little did you know. <laughs> little did I know. Because I was with my buddies, and it's like, there's no way this is going to catch on. The company's no idea. <laughs> they just want you delivering on time. You know? And now it's the number one thing that shippers and brokers are all talking about is, where's mm -hmm. the truck? Where's the truck? Where's the truck? And, and that, that's what drove it was, you know, it, it, you know, companies, some wanted them, some didn't, but they were lukewarm at best towards them. But then the whole EDI revolution came around, and it's like mm -hmm. where their stuff is. And some of the stuff that I hauled over the years was, you know, we're, we're talking multi-million dollars in a trailer. Right. They didn't want to kind of know where you were. They they wanted. <laughs> I'm just curious where their $4 million shipment is. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing it out there. So that's kind of what drove the, you know, the adapt, the, you know, the, the company or the industry adapting and adopting those technologies was, you know, the outside pressure that came to them. So, so, um, so let's talk about the, the road check. I know that JJ Keller told me, and I think they have a lot of resources for those of you uh, who are like, I want to learn more about the things that you they're, that they're talking about today on the show. I'll put a bunch of links um, uh, in each posting, including the podcast for anybody listening just on podcast. All you have to do is tap and you'll see there's a bunch of links underneath from JJ Keller, giving you a lot of information about the things that Tom is talking about today. Um, but uh, what what should fleets do to prepare themselves for the road check? And what is road check? And when is it? Yeah, road check is one of these things that it, it happens every year. It's the, the best description I heard for it is it's an inspection blitz. The officers aren't doing anything different. You know, I've worked with a lot of them over the years. I'm, I'm a member of CVSA and all that. They don't do anything different during CVSA other than they do as many inspections as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. So it's the same inspection they do in December when uh, road check comes around. It's going to be the same inspection. Uh, so how you would prepare for it and what you need to do is the same as it would be as if you were getting ready for inspections in December. And it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, for, for any roadside inspection, you want to make sure the vehicle's up on maintenance and it's in good shape. You know, it's been through a maintenance shop. Somebody that knows what they're doing looks at it. Drivers are good at spotting obvious things. You know, they look at the truck and say, yeah, that's not right. right. But I've, I haven't seen too many. I'm going underneath and actually pulling on slack adjusters to check free play. You know, there's, so there's just certain things that drivers don't. And in, in a lot of cases, you don't want them doing it. You know, it's 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 something that requires special knowledge and skills. Yeah. I'm sure the vehicle's been into a shop that somebody has that knowledge and skills has, has looked at it and made sure it's in good shape. Um, so get those vehicles through, get maintenance done on them, make sure they're current, make sure they got a good maintenance inspection done on them. You know, and tell your drivers, you know, make sure you're doing your daily inspections. You know, you get to get that walk around done in the morning, get a walk around done whenever you park it during the day. Keep an eye on it through the day. Your life depends on that thing running correctly and, and doing what it yeah. does. So keep an eye on it and uh, make sure that you have your credentials with you. It's one of those foolish things that, that fleets deal with is like the driver forgot his driver's license at home. It's like that is kind of something that's important <laughs> in your line of work. You know? Don't forget that at home. 
Um, and make sure you know what you're doing with your hours of service records. You know, if you're, if you're using time records, make sure you can explain to the officer. I don't have logs yep. because uh, if you're using paper logs, I use paper logs because um, and make sure that everything's current and right as far as your, your logs go. And, and you do those things on a daily basis. Roadside inspections don't go badly. Uh, when it comes to getting ready for road check, it's just a matter of getting disciplined about, okay, let's get everything through the shop, make sure it's good. Let's get the reminders out to the drivers, whether you got one, 10 or, or 17,000, get the reminders out there. Remember to keep your license with you. Remember to keep your life right. squared away. You know, so it's a good chance for everybody to get a reset. That's one thing I love about, uh, about road check. It gives everybody a chance to do a reset. Let's look at how we're doing things. Let's make sure everything's good. Let's make sure everyone knows what they need to know. So that when roadside inspections come, we're able to get through them with ease. And then road check just kind of pushes that. The other thing I love- Are roadside inspections like literally done on the side of the road or are they at wait stations and you get flagged and they tell you to go hang out at a wait station? When, where does where do these happen? The answer is yes. <laughs> They'll do them on the side of the road. <laughs> the they above. pull you over for all <laughs> of the above. They'll pull you out of traffic to do an inspection. In some states, they don't have to have a reason. They just, they just decide that they want to do an inspection on you. They'll pull you to the side oh, of the road. Oh, wow. Um, they have that written right in their state statutes allowing it. Um, other states will have what's called for cause. In other words, there has to be some reason for the officer to pull you over, but then he's got you on the side, so let's do a roadside inspection. Mm-hmm. The other issue, the, the other place you'll see them done is at the, the, the in Wisconsin, referred to as the uh, safety and weight enforcement facilities. Most people just call them scales. Here we call them SWEFs yep. because we have our own version of English here, in case you hadn't noticed from my accent. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like the, if you get a drink from the bubbler. Bubbler, yeah. And I was like, what is a bubbler? What are you <laughs> talking about? Where are the bubbles? And they're like, the water comes. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you guys call that a bubbler. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, little sidetrack there. <laughs> little sidetrack. Same thing, though, because we have swefts. We don't have scales here. <laughs> but yeah, at the, at the inspection size and weight inspection facilities, you know, they'll, they'll do them there. Um, so they they kind of do them all over the place, and a lot of the areas will have uh, designated inspection sites where it's just basically a large paved area where they'll flag you know vehicles in to do inspections on them. So they're kind of all over. You don't really know when you're going to get into one. So you know that's why you know 365 days a year you got to be ready for them. And that, that's road check just gives yeah. you focus again. Okay, let's zero in on this and make sure we're getting getting the drivers out there good vehicles and ready for these inspections. And the other thing I love about road check, by the way, is it's a snapshot. You can look over the years. CVSA has some great graphing, if you ever get a chance to look at it, showing where we've come since the late 80s. And it's, it's we've made a lot of progress in the business. What is it, CVSA? CVSA, Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance. All right, we'll Google this. They're the ones that oversee training and the out-of-service criteria for the officers, you know, things along those lines. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing how far the industry's come as far as, you know, the out-of-service rates. Because one thing that, that road check does, it gives the industry, the agency, uh, everybody a snapshot of how we're doing. How you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a timeless snapshot. You know, it's always the 72-hour period, and we do as many inspections as possible. And then we see how we're, how we're doing as an industry. And the, you know, the agency says, well, this is how we're doing as an agency. So everybody kind of gets a good snapshot of where things are. And over time, it's 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 impressive how far we've come as far as the driver out of service rates from uh, during road check and the uh, uh, vehicle out of service rates. It's 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 been impressive over time. You look at it now, we've kind of plateaued because you know then, then you get a whole argument philosophically. Are we at the are we at the natural zero? Is is you know four point seven? Or can we do or, better? Or can we do better? And the problem, mm. fleet safety or something like we're talking about now nationwide. Um, how do you squeeze it even harder? I mean, or where is, you know, we, we've done all these things. What's our next step? And that's one of the I things. I thought that- about that a lot, though. I thought, well, perhaps there's places in the in the regulations where we could, I, I, the, the law regulations in Congress and, and these administrations don't quite work like this. But <laughs> I thought, you know, maybe there's some some things, the requirements that are a little bit old and out mm-hmm. of date that we can kind of let go. And some new ones that would be would be really great as well. Um, and there's like a balance somewhere of updating and modernizing and progressing that way. Yeah. I know it's hard because our industry is really old, but you know, and and I'm sure people are gonna hate me when I say this, but just know I'm not a truck driver, I'm just a dumb lawyer. But you know, some of the, we're still doing urine tests. 
instead mm-hmm. of historical testing. Um, I feel like we could change that in our industry. There's a couple other areas that I feel like we could change. Mm-hmm. Um, and in exchange, give up, you know, maybe we can make the hours of service a little bit easier. It doesn't then <laughs> right now it's like a rocket scientist. Right. I'm trying to figure out how this works. <laughs> am I <laughs> am I am I on duty? Am I not on duty? Am I in my bunker? No, I'm out of my bunker now. Like it's it's kind of nuts. Um and yeah. be better, make better, uh, more funding for for um, uh, truck stops, something like that. Like I feel mm-hmm. like give and take. I know it's not as easy as what I just said, though. No, it's but not. You, 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 you look at all the things that can be changed and improved. The engineering of the vehicles. You know, we we've reached a certain point. Do we want to go further? Uh, yeah. Whether it's assisted driving, whether it's automated, whatever it is, do we want to go further? Well, we've made a lot of progress with the vehicles over the years. Um, you get in a crash in a vehicle nowadays, your odds of surviving the same identical crash uh, compared to 20, 30 years ago, you know, your, your odds are way better nowadays because the engineering is much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much better engineered. They've, they've moved all the hard points off the roadways. Um, they've gone to different sloping for ditches and, and embankments. I mean, you know, they've done all these engineering um, fixes. Um, they, they, they've, they've fixed the environment in a lot of cases that, that we operate in, you know, as far as, in, as an industry. Um, Shippers now understand the principle that I can't put this load on a driver and expect them to be in Los Angeles tomorrow afternoon. You know, uh huh. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah. So you know the operational environment is is, is improved over You're time. Right. Uh, and 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 the drivers are so much more educated and they know so much more than they used to know. You know, so there's there's all these gains that we've made. But as you mentioned, what can we shift around? What can we do differently? Uh, the whole enforcement model is 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 there a way we can get carriers and drivers to perform better without having to threaten them with a club, you know, and, and, and the yeah. CSA has got this thing called beyond compliance um, that has just huge potential. It's like, you know, what can we get companies to do better without telling them this is the rule you have to do this. So, you know, there's, there's, there's all these different things they can think about and look at because we, we, I like to put it this way. We've done an excellent job of getting ourselves to this point, but we got to work harder to get a little better. Yeah. I agree. Yep. That's actually um, the first positive uh, summary. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this show of where our industry is going. Maybe it's because I'm always hanging out with lawyers, or or I have you know horrible examples to give. But it's nice to hear that uh, to have somebody with that kind of experience reflect and see the positive and where we've gone in our industry. It's not all bad. Cause you know what the media does too with truck oh, drivers yeah. and truck accidents. So every day you're like, Oh my God, we're going to die. Yeah. We're going to die by a truck soon. Um, well, I, I, I go back to the days when I, when I first made the transition from driver to, to a safety supervisor, one of the things that I had to do was go to school to learn to be a defensive driving instructor. That was just, you know, that that was where I was at. That was the transition. That was one of the steps you had to take. And I sat in a class and the instructor said there were 42,000 deaths on American roadways last year. And to me, it was like, that's all. Cause you know, coming yeah, from, uh, sorry, that's what yeah. I would have said too. That's all. And the person sitting next to me isn't from the, the, isn't from the driver background. They were, they were working their way up through the administrative side of things. And they were shocked. It's like, I can't believe that's that many. So, you know, perspective makes a big difference. I, I come from the old world where, um, well, then they explained, well, 2 million people were injured on the highways. It's like, okay, that's where the rest of them are, you know, because yeah. I saw as a driver, you saw so many crashes, you saw so many accidents. Same with our modern environment. There's a crash in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and the whole world knows about it. It's 100% true. You know, so it's, it's the whole like, world have as world. many, but they're, they're, there's a spotlight on all of them, it seems, they're all the series. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the perspective over time, you look at it and it's like, now we're, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're nowhere near 42,000 deaths a year on the highways, you know, between everything we've done. So we've made a lot of progress. It's just, how do we continue to improve when we're, you know, where can we go from here? And that's, that's the safety Mm -hmm. in me, track and trend and manage risk and eliminate risk and, and all that stuff. That's my safety background surfacing. I'm sorry. I'll put it back away. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be loose on it. No, I love it. It I'm like, like, wow. (laughs) <laughs> this is great. Um, so, I, I, and I also just keep thinking about Tom the driver, and I'd be like, "You, you, you're on like a live show, Tom the driver. 
and you're going to be talking to everybody about trucking safety. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, get out of here. <laughs> this is crazy lady. Um, so tell me before uh, I want to wrap up, although I could talk to you for another hour um, and I, I feel like you need to come back on and give the community more insight on a couple other topics that I keep thinking about when we're talking. But nevertheless, JJ Keller has an Encompass platform. Um, what is this platform? Uh, who's it for? Mm. And can and you know can do you guys have like some free free stuff to give us like free uh, trials or something like that? We love free yeah, trials. Well, <laughs> what Encompass is 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 uh, it is a fleet management program. Is the is the easiest way to describe it. And what it does is stores all of your required documents, all the documents you decide you want to store, and it makes them available to you wherever you are nationwide. You can, all you have to have is an internet connection. So your driver, the stuff we're talking about today, your driver qualification records, um, your roadside inspection reports, your accidents uh, records, your maintenance records are all stored right in there. And the other, it's got ticklers built in. I call them ticklers. Some people use different words for that, but it tickles you. I call them tickles too. <laughs> it says, hey, you need to put this in here. It's missing. Or, hey, this is about to expire. Find that driver. Make sure he, that that driver knows to go in and renew their license. So it, 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 it not only stores all that stuff for you, it works with it and helps you and lets you know this needs done. This needs done. You're missing this. It's, it's got all these uh, things, these ticklers built into it. And for something like road check coming up, it's the kind of thing where you can look in there and say, oh, my word, we're only 84% compliant. Which yeah, missing a bunch of things. Now we better. That's amazing. I like that. Yeah, we better nail this down and figure out what the eighty-four percent we're missing is because with the road check coming, it better not be anything that'll get us in trouble on the road. You know, it might be somebody missed the signature on a medical card that the driver turned in. You know, who knows? It could be something simple like that, but it could also be something like that. Uh, uh, George out of uh, New Hampshire's allowed his license to expire. You know, so. Mm -hmm. It gives you that ability to see where you're at on everything and, and get you up. To, it forces you basically to keep everything up to date and in line with where you need it. So it's a great program, you know, it's especially for a smaller company. That's a little going back to going full circle back to where we started. You're confused about all this stuff. I, I know I need this stuff. I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to. <laughs> what, is this I'm FMC what is this FMCS? What is this FMCS? Himsa. <laughs> you know, it's this is a tool that, that that keeps those records all organized for you, and it tells you when you need to do something. You know, so it's it's a really great program uh, that way. And our company is kind of unique because if if that doesn't really do it for you, you need somebody else holding your hand and helping you. Uh, we have the ability yep. to do that. If yep. I love that information, you've got the ability to self manage. You understand you're mature. Well, I, I, I refer to them as a mature company. You're a, and it does make a different size, you know, whether it's five trucks or 5,000. If you're a mature company, you understand the regulations, you know what records you need. You're doing a good job of keeping them yourself. You've survived that past audit. Yeah, you've survived. They came in and you figured out who they were and what they wanted. Um, you're, you're what I call a mature company. You've got this all nailed down. All you need then is information. You just need to know when the rules, mm -hmm. one of the big things that uh, fleet managers in general, safety managers have trouble with is they keep changing the rules. Well, they do because things happen. Yeah, uh, like yeah, COVID. So, like COVID. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we have things that are just information based, where it's it's a manual or it's an online product that's got regulations and explanations of the regulations in it for that company that's already mature and knows what they're doing. They just need to be able to look something specific up or get told when something's changing on them. So right, we, and maybe like a fleet manager who's you said is dealing with eighteen thousand fires. Mm -hmm. you know, the last thing you want them doing is keeping track of when somebody's CDL is about to expire, or when yeah. somebody's annual inspections do. Um, it is nice to have a little bit of that done for you. Yeah, um, definitely. And I think, and I put a link in the uh, in the comments. Uh, JJ Keller has given us a uh, free sixty days for Madropolis to try and compass. So people know that I love technology and I love keeping track of these documents because you need them. And there really is no joke. There's like a whole book of regulations of stuff you have to keep uh, and for a certain amount of time. So this kind of technology is very helpful. Uh, Tom, I'm so excited you joined me today. I hope you come back because we're going to talk about a lot of other things that are right up your alley of expertise. 
Um, thank you very much. And thank you to Gigi Keller and our sponsors for allowing us to have this episode of Mad Games. We'll see you next time. I'm glad to do it.